Uh, via telephone, Joe Ferretti is uh, with us as well. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, everybody. How are you feeling there, Mr. Ferretti? Uh, a little better. A little better. All right. well, I had a rough night last night, Rob, as you know, because I was uh, texting you at 4 a.m. Well, I, I can tell you this. When I have a message on my phone at 4 a.m. or 3 a.m., I know it's not good. I, yeah. I know that. But, I mean, someone's in the hospital, somebody died, somebody's got arrested, something happened. But No, it's just me being sleep-deprived because I wasn't feeling well. So I just want to alert you. I might not be able to make it this morning, but I... I suited up. Here I am. But, Joe, uh, prior to going on air, uh, Rob mentioned that you had been feeling ill. You got very little sympathy from us from your physical aspect. We were all over your case for not being man enough to come up and call in. We were saying we did not have a lot of nice things to say about Joe Ferretti this morning. Joe, let me say by we, he means him. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that. I, yeah. uh, well, I, thinking about the possible abuse, that's why I just yeah. said that. <laughs> yeah, and I, every time I think of you feeling ill i think of you in the shower scene and that's oh. that makes me ill well, there you go bill you had to do it didn't well, you well you had to do it man you had to go there All i had right. to go there happy new year joe same to you i think it was almost a year ago uh today that we gathered in this room with uh, then sheriff nate Harmon, joe ferretti via telephone bill in studio with me here and it was in the aftermath of the situation with Nate's daughter, Carrie, which was an incident that took place uh, January 5 overnight into January 6. And here we are in January 3. Last year on January 23, we met with Nate Harmon in this room. Nate, good morning. Welcome back to the show. Good morning. Thank you for, for inviting me back. I appreciate her having me. It, it's been you. quite a uh, year since then, to say the least. Yeah, I, I guess when you make the front page of the uh biggest events of 2023 i guess uh you know it's uh you got to think about uh everything that's happened uh this i have adult children joe has adult children we know adult children do what adult children do and at some point along the way it's not your responsibility nor is it your fault necessarily uh in the aftermath of that though do you regret any of your actions or decisions since that night yes yes I, I, and i'll put it this way um and one of the main reasons why i wanted to come on here is uh you know as you mentioned social media and the the, the alleyways that it uh, mm -hmm. curveballs that it takes and of course this was absolutely 100 percent fueled on the front end uh, uh for that or by that um but a lot of folks are you know from that and 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 the whole snowball effect of other things are are, are taking the uh let's just say uh, uh the theft of a or the st the taking of a pack of chewing a gum and making it look like i've robbed a bank and it's you know it's there's nothing here that i was that i did that was malicious uh, intentional other than waking up in the middle of the night to a phone call that my daughter's been in an accident. So if I'm guilty of anything, it's being a father. I'm 100% guilty of obstructing, though. Um, uh, I pled to it. And I agreed to the statement that uh, I read. Me and my attorney sat down and uh, we drafted what I had to read in front of uh, Judge Faircloth. I 100% agreed to it um, because uh, in hindsight, uh, it was just before Thanksgiving, and Harley has the uncanny ability of basically saying shut up and listen to what I have to say because he provided a lot of clarity for me. And Harley's uh, Harley Wagner, you're a target. Harley Wagner, yes. Um, and uh, he got me to understand that uh, I'm not the victim uh, of that night, um, that I did make mistakes. Uh, which I, I even though where my mind was, I woke up. I said, "Look, I'm not going to hide anything. I'm going to take my cruiser, but it's my daughter. I got to make sure she's medically sound. She's okay. I got to take care of the car, but I'm going to make sure that my steps are documented. And when I get there, and I was 100% convinced, when I get there." I'm not going to redirect the investigation. I'm not going to intervene in any way. I'm not going to obstruct the uh, Deputy Henderson. Um, I was going to walk the scene, chat a little bit. You know, like I said about the deer, there was no deer, or at least we agreed on that. And 
And, and that's where my mind was when I got there. So uh, fast forward, he was done with everything. When that camera shut off, he was done with the investigation. He goes back to his cruiser. He's sitting in his cruiser. 20 minutes later, I run a PBT on my daughter. Um, whether there was miscommunication on the amount, what have you, um, I should have took that information and walked down to Deputy Henderson and said, look, would you mind uh, running my daughter through field sobriety? I'd feel a lot more comfortable. Um, uh, I should have mentioned it during the uh, to the investigator uh, after the fact uh, because my concern was I went there as a dad. Social media is viral. There's no chance that people are going to delineate the two situations as separate. Whether it, it, because in my mind I'm 100% convinced. I'm still convinced that. Whether it's 20 minutes after the accident or two hours after the accident investigation is completed, what I do as a father is no one else's business. If, you know, and for uh, for you know more of a legal perspective on it, it's it's what's considered de minimis. If if we're going to chastise and burn at the stake every officer that went to the grocery store in their cruiser to get a gallon of milk. Isn't that private gain? Are we going to crucify canine officers who have ran their dogs around trucks of the boyfriend of their daughter's boyfriend just to see if there's uh, you know if if there um, drugs in the truck? Yeah, drugs in the truck. So you know, we're, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that that stuff doesn't happen almost on a weekly, daily basis. These officers have ran PBTs on themselves before leaving a, a gathering or their own kids after coming back from a gathering. So it's in my mind, I was a dad, didn't want to intervene with Deputy Henderson's investigation, and I was doing something that had been done and is still occurring uh, in the law enforcement community. So that's where my mind was. Mm -hmm. And again, in hindsight, I'm culpable for not walking down and, and telling Deputy Henderson what I did. Um, because even though I wasn't at the accident scene, I was up at the cemetery, I was close enough, I should have walked down. And I should have mentioned it to the investigators. So that's why I pled guilty to the obstructing. Were you parsing, Nate, when you... What does that mean? Uh, as, for instance, you were asked on this show, was a PBT administered at the scene? You said no. And correct. And, and subsequently, so I, you're separating the cemetery from the scene. Correct. That's parsing to me. Yes, that's right. you, 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 yeah, you were asked was after the camera shut off was a PBT administered at all period end of story you shook your head no you said no period end of story because it wasn't done on what you regarded as the scene it was done across the street 50 feet down the road at the cemetery correct that's parcel. correct I didn't want people to think that uh, you know deputy Henderson shut off the camera and then we ran a PBT together it was at the accident scene or anything like that I mean there was enough rumor mill going around on and different storylines and whatnot uh, so I kept that separate in my own mind yeah as a dad uh, however it looks like the they say that the crime is never as bad as the cover-up Right. In this particular case, the parsing in that situation didn't help you long term. No, it didn't. You'd have been better off saying, yeah, we did the PBT. A hundred percent. I would have been better off saying it. Uh, like I said, mentioning it to the investigator, would it have changed anything? I doubt it because the and I hope we get into this because uh, the petition that was filed was just grossly unnecessary mm -hmm. and, and malicious. We'll, we'll get to let's good, get to that, good. but let's let's stay where we are so now. It, so yeah, so I think um, it was innocently done. I think it was it was attacked inappropriately and and contorted to where you know it was done intentionally. I, I did cover up something, uh, and and that's not me. I've I've not. I don't have a history of that. That's not, you know, I'm guilty of being a father and, and staying in that mindset. Mindset, And like I said, Harley's the one that kind of did it for me um, because we talked about it. He said, Nate, you got to get out of this mindset that you're the, you're, you're the victim father here mm -hmm. um, because there was, uh, you know, issues at the scene that you should have apprised uh, folks of. And, I, and, and it took someone else really to kind of just sit in front of me and, and – and, 
hearing an unbiased, a, a person that looks at the discovery and talks to people and then having that fresh set of eyes on it, especially with his experience in DUIs and whatnot, um, it was very eye-opening to, uh, and we've had many discussions since, you know, I'm stubborn-headed, so it's, uh, uh, he, he uh, changed, the, uh, changed my mindset and how I was approaching it. I just think it's, it's important to understand uh, as we go back a year in time, uh, you're at the time a, a popular sheriff in Berkeley County. Uh, we don't have drama in the department for the first time in how many years, and people are relieved by that. Mm. People want to believe their sheriff, and they want to believe that their yeah. sheriff is honest. And yeah. when their sheriff is asked, is, was there a PBT administered, they don't want it to be, well, technically not on the scene and not at that time. It was 50 feet down the road and two hours later. Mm. The correct answer they wanted was, yeah, there was. Yeah, yeah, no, I, was. I can't. And she failed it. I can't disagree with you on that. Um, yeah, I just, that's all I'll say about that. I can't disagree with you on that. And now, at, at the same time, though, I believe the people want someone that is human. I think that, uh, you know, any expectations of the sheriff or any other position being bulletproof or we're holier than thou and we can't make mistakes, I think that's an incorrect assumption. Um, I am human, mm -hmm. and I am a father. Jaden is our fifth daughter. Christmas was wonderful. Um, there's nothing I wouldn't do for her. Um, our kids make mistakes, and, and truth be told, our society is suffering from parents not being nosy enough. And 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 involving themselves in their kids' lives. So I'm guilty of that. Mm -hmm. And, and, and to, to wrap it up uh, in that kind of perspective is where I'd like to stay. Joe? Uh, Nate, uh, I appreciate you uh, offering up uh, an opportunity for us to ask you questions. Of course, uh, you, know, you, you were a servant to the community, and uh, this was a, a pretty big deal that occurred last year, and, and, and I know a lot of the people in the public have a lot of questions. Uh, I, I have a couple, and I acknowledge and appreciate you uh, indicating and owing up to uh, an obstruction charge, and, uh, and that surrounds that PBT test. Uh, and, and we can understand, I think, that at the in the heat of the moment, at the accident scene, you're there with your daughter, everybody's upset and concerned, and, and so perhaps decision-making at that point in time uh, is not the best. Uh, and in hindsight, I, I, I hear you this morning. You, you are acknowledging that your decision-making at that time was not the best. However, I, I'm aware of a police report that exists, uh, and we know that a trooper was brought in to conduct an investigation, interviewed a lot of people. And there were times afterwards, and I'm talking months afterwards, where upon reflection, you could have provided additional information as part of that criminal investigation that was done. Uh, is it fair to say that you did not provide full detailed information regarding the PBT test when you had an opportunity in speaking to the investigator? Um, I, I'd say that that's based off of perspective. And, and Joe, I, I respect you quite a bit. Uh, I would stay along the same lines of John Gilstrap when we were, when you guys were talking about this um, earlier in December. Uh, he started down that fatherly line, and, and like I said, I took that mindset, and I stay stuck with that mindset. It's no one's business of what I did 20 minutes after the investigation was over. Uh, away from the accident scene. And I know um, we're splitting hairs here, but that was my mindset. And just as I said with uh, the discussion with my attorney, you know, it, it didn't really dawn on me that I, w that I should have revealed uh, information to the investigator until I sat down with Harley Wagner because there's a lot of other smaller details that occurred during the investigation that no one's aware of. There's particular biases and uh, um, other things that took place, phone calls that were made um, that, that steered things in different directions that nobody's aware of. And I'm not going to go into that today, but um, I stuck to my mindset as a father and um, it took, you know, it, it, it's like having a son that, you know, you, you've, you've told three times before not to do something, and now you just had this come to Jesus discussion with him, and he gets it. Um, and that's where my mindset was. Now, 
after my discussion with, with Harley and him seeing uh, the raw uh, material, I guess, after we got Discovery finally, um, there was no reason for me to not look at it from a, a different perspective as he was and as you're talking about now. Um, and so the answer to your question is during the time I wasn't of that mindset and it wasn't my perspective, but there in, uh, early November, when we discussed things, um, it changed. So yes, well, now I would say yes. Okay. But Nate, you understand then the implications as, as a law enforcement official, uh, an officer trained to investigate, uh, these kinds of incidents, uh, not being truthful or not being complete in your answers to an investigator when you have time to reflect and, and provide the best information possible, uh, that that's that also could be deemed obstruction, can it not? I think we need to get away from the whole uh, – because we're – I don't want to give the perception that anything of this was intentional, okay? I know my position. I'm well aware of how it's, uh, uh, you know, appeared upon – but like I said to Rob earlier, I'm a human being. And if anyone thinks of me differently uh, or expects more of me than fatherly decisions and uh, advised uh, um, decision-making from my, my constituents and whatnot, um, th then that's unrealistic. All right. So for this, for this image of, um, you know, you can't tell no uh, lie, well, I wasn't in my mind. Uh, telling a lie I was I was talking about it as a far and then let's look at this part too though all right something else I had to think of I didn't intervene with deputy Henderson I didn't um, you know and at the same time um, he made the decisions that he made for the reasons that he's made them uh, by his own choice and and he didn't see any signs of, of intoxication or anything like that. So I trusted his. You're talking about a 15, 17-year veteran. And I'm not going to, especially with the snowball effect that was happening on social media, subject him and his decision-making to the gauntlet of Facebook court. So there, there's a lot of, you know, uh, things that go into this more than you're an officer, you're not supposed to lie. Well, I didn't. I didn't feel that I was, um, you should have put yourself above that. You should have transitioned your mindset to law enforcement. She did wrong. Well, no, I was a dad that night, and I carried that mindset until early November. Well, I, I do recall the dash cam footage with uh, Deputy Henderson, uh, and, and you're on there, and, and you guys have a conversation, and I believe you posed the question to the deputy, was she drinking? 100%, and yeah. he said he didn't know or couldn't tell. He said he could yes. Uh, Yep. Right. He said he couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your daughter's sobriety at the scene was an issue right from the get go when you got there. Correct. How was it an issue? How was it an issue? I mean, obviously, if your daughter gets in a wreck early in the morning on a Friday into a Saturday, if I'm remembering right, Thursday into Friday, regardless, um, one of the first things in a parent's mind is she better not have been or he better not have been drinking and stuff. So, yeah. It's a common sense question. Was she drinking? Yeah. It wasn't like, hey, my daughter's an alcoholic. I know of her to drink several times when she's driving. That wasn't it at all. When I walked up, it's a standard fatherly question. And when the deputy of 15, 17 years tells me, I can't tell, he can't tell. You look at the body cam footage of the questions that he was asking her, her clarity and her mindset to the point to where, what date do you want me to put on this because it's slightly after midnight? Um, I, I've arrested plenty of DUIs. I didn't see any levels of intoxication in, in no slurred speech. And, and when I walked up to her, I didn't smell alcohol. I didn't see bloodshot eyes. So there was absolutely no reason for me to second guess Deputy Henderson's statement of, I can't tell. Well, guess what? I couldn't either. Okay. So you administered the PBT and what were the results? Well, with my plea agreement, um, as I stated with my plea agreement, it was a point. It was over a point zero eight. It was over the legal limit. It was over a point zero eight. Okay. Yeah. When, which, when you say point zero eight, that's the legal limit, is it not? Yeah, I'm not that 
Sure. I'm not. I, I, what point zero five is something it, where it grades, but point zero eight is over yeah. the maximum. Yeah, for I mean, DUI, yeah. So in West Virginia and yeah. in, in many states. But when the deputy says it's under and gives you a thumbs up, and that's all that's said, what are you going to think? Okay. Well, uh, re- regardless, though, you're, you're you're indicating today that this was uh, a test result over the legal limit. I'm sticking with what I said during my plea agreement. Uh, okay. Well, we're not we weren't privy to that, so I, I, that's why I asked. But um, so uh, that and, and I, as I understand you today, Nate, that's where you're owing up to the obstruction was that uh, a PBT was administered. It was over the legal limit, yet uh, immediately after that, there were no charges brought against your daughter for de- driving under the influence. Well, I'm, 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 I'm owning up to the fact that the PPT registered, and I should have went down to Deputy Henderson's, said, hey, would you mind running her through field sobriety? I regret not doing that. I also regret not bringing up the fact that at that accident scene, uh, my mind, what my mindset was, and why I said what I said uh, to the investigator, and I, I wish I could okay. take that back, honestly. All right. The only other question I have before uh, we give Mr. Stubblefield a chance here: uh, the tracking device. There seems to have been some questions raised about whether or not um, the information on the tracking device was deleted by you. Uh, we know that you had placed one on your daughter's car, and we know that. Uh, you retrieved it at the scene because that's all on the body cam footage from Deputy Henderson. Uh, was that information on there deleted by you? Yes. And when when it was deleted, was the information that was on there, uh, including the whereabouts of your daughter prior to the accident, and her route that she took to the accident scene. I had no idea. So, and, and let me let me give some talk context to that. All right. So, um, the reason that was on there was for uh, an investigation um, that I can't go into detail on, but it was it was there was some information that was garnered and. Uh, uh, substantiated to uh, move forward. Uh, it wasn't on there to keep tabs of my uh, daughter's whereabouts. Me and my uh, wife had uh, access to that. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, uh, because the car is in my name, so I wanted to make sure she said she was going where she was said she was going, but in a matter of two weeks, obviously she got in an accident, and like it was only on there for two weeks. So I kneeled down at the accident scene to make sure that that wasn't lost um, because it's not mine and and I can't imagine how much that stuff costs. But regardless, uh, once the tow truck had the vehicle on the vehicle, uh, the tow truck left the scene, I took the GPS off the car at that point in time, not at the accident scene. Um, I took it off uh, elsewhere and for the simple reason is I have crappy knees and I can't get down crawl up underneath a car and try to take some device off when it was sitting in a bunch of debris so no I did not take it off of the car at the accident scene the GPS was on there for a specific reason we got specific information and my wife and I did not need access to it uh, any longer and everybody sitting here I th- believe would agree that there's no such thing as deleting it my conversation with the investigator in my statements still remain the same. Uh, I deleted my access to it. For computer forensics, there's you can't delete nothing. There's always a backup, especially with uh, uh, the uh, entity where I got the GPS from. Uh, there's always a backup. The unit itself has memory. Um, I deleted our access to it. I don't want me nor my wife to be... Uh, accused of manipulating anything so that's what exactly what i said to the investigator so actually when the third time i was asked by the investigator because dan james didn't like what i was saying i said just tell dan james i deleted it and then uh, that was our first week of october when he asked me for the third time because he wasn't accepting my answer of I deleted our access to it. From a cop standpoint, from an investigator standpoint, and I've investigated multiple uh, criminal offenses 
and done multiple investigations, there is no such thing as deletion. And Dan James is the special prosecutor assigned Correct. to the investigation out of Morgan County. So in my mind, I wasn't – in my mind, knowing what I know about investigations, there's no hiding nothing. You can't hide anything. And, and, and the fact that they have the information and was able to look and view at the information proves proves my mindset. So. Well, that, that's a true statement because we know that, according to the report, they went to a server mm-hmm. where the information was stored from the tracker. They were able to retrieve the information from the server, right. not the tracking device, and uh, they were able to establish that your daughter was at a bar on Route 11, uh, Winchester Avenue, for approximately three to four hours, and that she drove at a high rate of speed uh, mm-hmm. up a point to where the accident occurred. Um <laughs> Is that, would that information ordinarily be relevant for an investigation as to whether or not she was driving under the influence or recklessly? Well, I, how, how would it be relevant? What exactly can you prove other than she's been at an establishment? I mean, for the for a drink to contain brown liquid, is that a Coke? Is it Jack and Coke? Is it a beer? Um, does the footage actually show every single drink that she took? I mean, uh, I had no idea where she went because I didn't go into the GPS and, and, and look at it. I didn't find out until afterwards where she actually came from. And if you looked at social media uh, and all the rumors there, apparently it was Green Frog for the longest time. So, you know, it, it was that wasn't concerning to me. The speed, which was 68 miles an hour in a 45-mile-an-hour turn, is um, somewhat interesting to me because it's definitely uh, obviously over the speed limit and reckless at that point, and I would say significantly contributed to the accident, not to mention the damp roads uh, that had already been validated. Um, so was it intoxication? Was it speed? Was it a combination of both? Who knows? Um, it, none of which could be proven because uh, is the GPS calibrated? How is it calibrated to detect that speed? Because in our obviously challenging speeding tickets, you got to prove that your custom radar system had been calibrated, that you tested it. So how accurate is that GPS speed? Is it indicative? Sure, it's indicative. But when you talk about what establishment she came from, I mean, there was a pool tournament that night, and she was with a, a, a guy friend, um, and even the guy friend gave a statement says, I don't know how much she had because, uh, yeah, I was playing pool. And she never sat there and it's not, you know, we could sit here and guess all day that she pounded five shots and drank three, you know, 22-ounce uh, glasses of beer. But uh, as far as being able to prove it, even as a father, as much as I want to, I can't. Joe, on that note, uh, we've got to stop for our break here, and we get back. Uh, Bill will have some questions for former sheriff of Berkeley County, Nate Harmon, in studio with she- former sheriff Nate Harmon. It's a habit. Uh, call you Sheriff Nate Harmon. <laughs> Bill and I are having this debate. Do you continue to call somebody by their office title once they leave the office? Well, I mean, former's. I, you know, I assumed as much. Uh, and why not? You know, uh, if if there's anything that that. Uh, positive out of this i can say honestly in the past three years i did exactly what i promised i would do uh i never stopped running we accomplished everything and uh, i'm very prideful of that so i I do appreciate former sheriff but i also appreciate nate too so if i have to call you by your office title that means bill's going to insist to call commission president bill stubblefield (laughs) still today (laughs) why not rob (laughs) president stubblefield you're up okay uh, Nate, or former sheriff or sheriff, uh, uh, appreciate you coming in. Uh, you made a comment earlier. Uh, if we expect that we should not expect more of you than than the action you took, uh, well, I have to disagree. I think with the in the case of a sheriff. And a, and a judge. You folks are held on a higher standard than anyone else. If we do not have faith in our sheriff, if we do not have faith in our judges, then where are we as a country? I'm not going to dwell back upon what happened the night of July, uh, uh, January 5th, 6th. That's been hashed over and over and over again. I'm going to do, uh, dwell more on what you have commented on and what a police investigation commented on. Uh, there was an inconsistency, and this was, I can understand, your emotions the night of January the uh, 5th. However, your emotions in the latter part of the month should have been tampered somewhat with reality. 
you're very articulate. You're very eloquent. You're also very evasive in your answer. And, and, I, and I find this part to be troubling. Uh, you did not omit about the breathalyzer test until later. The evidence of the investigation was that you inquired of a friend of yours, uh, a Larson, uh, to actually go and pick up a breathalyzer test because Henderson did not have one. He had, he had to go to Rocks to pick up one from a colleague. He came and the breathalyzer test was administered uh, uh, that same night but uh, several feet away. This information is critical. You did, you did not mention any of this last year on our radio show. With the tracker, uh, there's a lot to be done there as well. Uh, reading the, the, the report, uh, the investigating officer, it took a lot of time. You mentioned a second ago three different times that they came and asked you the same question. I have found over the years when someone asks the same question is there is reason not to believe previous answers. My, and I not necessarily to go in to, to rebut each one of these counterpoints. That's not my purpose. My purpose, I'm circling back to the fact that you as elected sheriff, we have to depend upon your answers being truthful, uh, especially 20-something days later, especially six or seven months later, we depend upon your answers being truthful. Yet you have not given us that strong sense of that we can believe you, Nate. And that's what bothers me more than anything else. Well, I, I, everybody has their right to their own opinion. Um, I definitely w uh, wouldn't. You, you can use the word evasive if you'd like, but, you know, I don't live my life based off other people's uh, um thoughts or opinions about me i i speak uh, what i feel to be truthful to uh, and i what i feel to be realistic and w whether i called a deputy to bring a pbt there does not change my mindset as a father to to prove if my daughter's lying or not if i can interrupt that's not my point my point is the evasiveness in your response if you had come forward with that information earlier, that would have been acceptable. You did not. You did not. That that information came up after the fact. So you're not accepting that it's it's a possibility that I, in my mind, as a human being, could separate the two in terms of the PBT being done 20 minutes after the accident, not at the accident scene. You you can't separate those two. Is that no, what you're saying? No, no. I'm saying what I'm saying is you, as a elected sheriff, needs to be honest. Uh, if you had tried to be evasive that night, been one thing. I could have been caught up on the emotionalism. But uh, uh, three weeks later, not bringing this to light, I think is where I have a problem. I, I disagree with you okay. because uh, I, I, regardless of who owns what uh, position or stands in what position does not make them less human and uh, or, or not culpable for uh, mistakes or decisions that were made. Uh, and I'm not uh, too prideful to not listen to a person, like I said about uh, Mr. Wagner, stand, sitting in front of me, having a, a clear uh, understanding and look, fresh look at the, uh, you know, it, the, the man doesn't involve himself with social media. And I need to say that because, and you don't either, which I'm, I'm glad do not, you don't. I do not. No. Um, uh, so your perception uh, means a lot to me as well, uh, especially those that don't pay attention to that stuff. But uh, it did not dawn on me that I was making mistakes until uh, Harley discussed it with me. Harley has... Uh, children, yeah. and uh, you know, even though he was my attorney, I consider him a a, a, a colleague and a friend, uh, and, and I highly respected his decision. And it was literally an epiphany to me that I was thinking about this in a wrong manner. So it's it's not about dishonesty. It's not about evasiveness as much as it was a a mindset of a dad. Yeah, I did not equate dishonesty with evasiveness. Yeah, let me. Uh, and I, I'm raising a point, and you've given a, you've given a response to it. But let me go to another subject. As well, and that's the petition, the hmm. petition uh, by the county commission. Uh, that is uh, uh, that for the ones who do not remember the petition was that you'd be removed from office. Uh, that was never executed because you resigned. You resigned after uh, uh, pleading, uh, pleading guilty to one of the misdemeanor charges. Mm -hmm. So the petition itself was 
is kind of mute, and uh, but the intent was there, and that was due to some action that you had with some point a job a position that you had also with some of the civil service. Would you speak to the petition and how you felt that was executed and that was carried out? Absolutely. Um, and I'm glad you brought that up because um, there was there's absolutely no validity to that eight other things that uh, Mrs. Delegati decided to add to that. She injected herself unnecessarily, and I think and feel to this day, and will always feel this, that it was malicious uh, because... How does someone get a, so um, imagine an investigation as a county prosecutor, your expectations, because we've been talking about the expectations of a sheriff. Well, my expectations of a county prosecutor, a department head, would be pick up a phone and call the other department head and have a discussion. Let's talk about these things. Let's sit at the table first before this crap and, and, and wasting taxpayers' money. And let's talk about this. What's the validity of this? Can you explain this? Now, Let I'll go add, further by clear, saying I contacted clear. the Ethics Commission. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. In September, when this was brought up, because a, 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 a deputy that I had disciplined had a luncheon with one of the commissioners, and I happened to be privy in the same location to see this odd uh, couple, uh, and uh, I didn't think anything of it until I got a phone call an hour and a half later about these particular things. So I know when it was brought up, and then when I discussed these things with the county administrator, I clarified it with the Ethics Commission. My relationship with Summit Point Training Center, my utilization of the truck, both were approved by the Ethics did Commission. You get a, this, did you get this in writing? No. Then no, I no. understand, unless you get something in writing from the Ethics Commission, it is not official. Well, uh, let, me, let me ask this. Did Katie Wilkes even contact the Ethics Commission before she filed this petition? I have no idea. But I neither do I, yeah. because it's not documented anywhere yeah. what she did. Now, but you, I'm curious you, you, about fact, the process you, yeah. for filing a petition. So it means that can anyone walk in and file a petition with the circuit court and say, I believe this person did A, B, and C? Because apparently it's what she did. She took the accusations from a deputy that I had disciplined in the past um, and made no other effort, no other effort, because she subpoenaed financial records from the Summit Point Training Center after she filed this petition, after she bullied the commission into uh, believing what she believed. And I'll, I'll stop right there for briefly. You use the so, term bullied yeah. with oh, the absolutely. commission. So how did, how did she bully the commission? Okay, so so picture this with me. Walk walk this walk with me, okay? So a week or two before this petition was filed, I caught her husband being unethically uh, 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 being unethical in terms of approaching one of my employees and asking this employee to be deceitful. He was bombarding her with questions, intimidated her to come up to his office, uh, asked her questions about my gun fund, and then subsequently told her there's to be no discussion about our discussion with anybody in your office, nor especially the sheriff. Now, if you're asking one of my employees, now, had I seen that conversation from afar and then approached my employee and said, hey, what were you guys talking about? And she felt obligated to lie to me? The, the she being who? Uh, one of my employees. You're an unemployed. You're employed. Yeah, one of my employees. Right. So that's what this. That's what Mr. Delegati did. He created this situation. So once I stumbled upon that, and I said, I went to his office. I said, What are you doing? Don't ever approach one of my employees. I got a statement from my employee saying how intimidated she was in this and uncomfortable she was that he made her. Now. When you do that, of course, I'm going to ask questions. What are you asking about my gun fund for? What? Why don't you sit? And I sat down in his chair. I said, you ask me because no one's called me to ask. So then. Um, what, what is the gun fund you keep referring to? Uh, so whenever anybody applies for a gun permit, mm -hmm. that, that the, those monies are, are, are stuck in a gun fund. The county commission doesn't have control over that particular fund. Who has control? They know, I do. Uh, who, I who audits it? 
uh, the the auditor, state auditor, uh, J.P. McCuskey. Uh, I mean, there's, the, the numbers are kept by my financial director there at the department. Uh, if there's any discrepancies or anything, but regardless, we document every single check that comes out of that gun fund. Every single thing that gets written. What from that can gun it fund. go for? What's the purpose of the gun fund? What will you use? Uh, it can go for it can go for training. It can go for uh, purchase of uh, equipment, red dots, red dots for Glocks or anything like that. We've had to and. Uh, I had to write a sixty thousand dollar check from it because the uh, former uh, county uh, administrator was short on overtime funds. So sometimes it, it, it's um, it, it's utilized as a cushion in some of those areas. I've, I've also heard it was used, and one of the problems that we used to afford golf tournament to fund to entrance fee for you and some of your colleagues. Was that true? I don't know of anything like that. I don't. So you don't think it was used for golf? Uh, I'd have to. Golf. I'd have to see the. I'd okay. have to. I'd have to see the, okay. the check written because mm-hmm. I don't remember anything like that. Why did they have concerns about the gun fund, Nate? I don't know because uh, no one would tell me anything. Uh, Mr. Delegati stood there and and didn't even um, attempt to answer the question at all. Um, then when I called a county commissioner. Um, he said that his best advice would be to call the county prosecutor. Well, I called the county prosecutor. Miss, Mrs. Delegati uh, made me believe that this was a, just a, a ripple effect to the uh, issues with the county clerk's uh, embezzlement issue because of the funds that uh, the county commission could not uh, necessarily uh, audit or see readily that, uh, you know, it, yeah, it's partially, it, yeah, it's related to that. And I said, okay, so what do you need to, what do you need to know? And she asked me how, how I document that stuff. And I said, every check that's written goes right through, uh, get, gets copied and put in a three ring binder. So you can see it. Now I'll, I'll inquire about that, yeah. uh, because I'm curious, uh, as to, uh, what you're talking about. I've went to, uh, several, uh, golfing events, most of which were sponsored somewhere somewhere else. If I, if there was funds taken from the gun fund to promote a a golfing tournament, that was a working event. I can assure you that. Uh, if uh, but I, there's no detail that I can sure. reflect because I I just uh, fair, I'd fair have enough. to look at the check. Fair Could, enough. We talk about the Summit Point employment. Nate, uh, I, that's the first time that I was aware that you were still working at Summit Point after you were elected was when that information came out yeah. this past summer. Well, I, you know, I've, I've, I've been working there since well before I took office uh, and all three years uh, while I was in office. So it never became this issue. What was your job there? I taught surveillance detection. I taught security driving. I taught firearms. I taught active shooter emergency preparedness courses. I taught hand-to-hand self-defense. Part of the petition, if I remember reading it, was that you were actively steering business towards Summit Point. Uh, I presume that implies some type of financial gain on your part by steering business there. Hmm. Now, someone needs to define uh, with specific clarity, and I hope Mrs. Delegati does because uh, she hasn't done uh, at all a significant job for in the, in, in the petition because um, if if there's some point and then you have uh, Pantera that's in Moorfield, then you have uh, PFT, which is in Alderson, uh, West Virginia, uh, not only do you got to look at the training facility, but then you got to look at how they teach. It could be 20% hands on and 80% PowerPoint. It could be 80% hands on and 20% PowerPoint. I made it no qualms coming into office that these folks would be going to a proactive law enforcement certified accident avoidance course, a driving course. And uh, the quote she made in here that I spent $64,000, well, we had over six classes, and each one cost $9,500. So over the course of three years, having six classes, yeah, I spent $64,000. But that's not the only thing I spent money on training for. I've sent our deputies uh, uh, to multiple training sessions. Matter of fact, I've did more training in one year than my predecessor did in all four years. Are these vendors, the, are these vendors bid? bid and do they are they awarded by the the best bid how's it done what's the mechanism for 
going to certain no places. the the training's not bid you got to look at okay so if i got to send someone to texas what's the lodging and per diem yeah. and the beauty about summit point is it's 25 minutes down the road and everybody gets to home, go home and see their family at night mm -hmm. and i don't have to pay exuberant amounts of lodging and per diem so all in all uh we're saving taxpayers money and then this training center specifically and this needs to be said thousands of dollars worth of donated venues to uh, our SWAT team. And uh, matter of fact, when I was sitting in front of the commission arguing uh, this petition with this six page rebuttal, I, as I was speaking to them, some at point donated a $1,000 a day range for our annual qualification, pistol qualifications. They weren't paying a dime for the flat range. And that's how they look at law enforcement. They're very LE friendly. That didn't come from me. That's that's the president. That's the CFO. That's the way they are. They're all pretty much veterans. They appreciate training. They know the value of training. So if 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 Katie can show me a training center that offers a driving course for my deputies where they can go home and see their families at night, that I don't have to ship them uh, for a week in a hotel or overnight in a hotel, and I don't have to pay per diem. I'm all ears. But I think with all due respect, though, Nate, we're running out of time. Sorry to trump you there, Bill, but I, I think the issue uh, is because you were employed there, are you financially benefiting from steering contracts there no as i explained to the ethics commission and uh but you have no written approval from the ethics commission, i spoke correct? with an attorney andrew i'm going to mispronounce his last name but i think it started with a k uh i'd have to look at my notes i have his name i have a call log uh where i called him mm -hmm. and i've got all that stuff written down on uh, a timeline but regardless I explained the fact that, one, I do not teach a class that my deputies are in, which means that driving classes they went to, I'm not one of the instructors. But do you, do you financially benefit when you send business to Summit Point as a person who works there? That, I think that's the core of the issue here. As an do you mean if as, I, do I get a, as do I get a commission official, or something? Does it, no. Does it, does it help you remain employed there? Do you get a raise the next year if you bring business in from Berkeley County? No. No, there's there, my paycheck doesn't change uh, whether I mention some point or not, uh, whether my deputies train there or not. I still teach surveillance detection to the army. I still do other things. But let me let me tell you, that whole petition process. They violated the 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 uh, chapter six, article nine of the executive sessions. I should have had a right to request that that executive session go public. They kicked me and my attorney out of the room for the next 35 to 40 minutes while Katie uh, Delegati and her husband had alone time with the commission. You know you know what they said in there? I can guess 99% that they talked about the four indictment charges that my attorney never even had discovery on, and she was privy to that information. So someone tell me how it is fair that someone that has privileged information is allowed to kick the person that's about and their attorney out of the room and have alone time with other people. Nate, at this point, i got to get our final break in. We're back with a final half minute after this. Joe, thank you very much via telephone. Uh, Bill, I know you have a final question for Nate. Nate, will you be running, will you be filing for, for election, for election? Um, my wife and I have sat down. Uh, we're looking at some, Five seconds. some options. But, uh, hey, uh, that's to be continued. I don't, I'm, we're not made a decision yet, but I want to promote the spaghetti dinner. And I don't have time. We're, uh, oh, it'll, it'll cut us off. It's 10 o'clock. Oh. This is Talk Radio, WRNR Martinsburg.